Hey guys, um, so we're finishing off our uh, so I'll see you later. So today we just want to wrap things up. So sorry, looking at some uh, application problems and um, so looking at uh, some of the uh, ways in which uh, linear functions can be used to relate real data or real examples in the world. Um, and there's many examples um, of linear type uh, functions. Um, and when you get to higher grades, you'll see, you know, obviously different types of functions that, that have uh, real world applications to them. Um, so here's, here's uh, three quick uh, little um, bits on earnings and stuff. Um, so what I would encourage you to do, see if you can um, stop the video and um, answer these questions um, without me showing you how to do them. And even if you get, you know, only partially way through, um, then at least it's going to sort of activate your brain to think about how you would even set up a question like this. So here's three examples dealing with uh, uh, Caitlin, Brayden, and uh, Kiana. And um, what we want you to do is to write a linear function that uh, sort of um, supports this uh, data, and uh, then do a quick sketch of what the graph would, would look like. Okay, so I would encourage you to pause the video and um, and then restart it and see how you did on those. Okay, so for our first question, uh, Caitlin earns uh, $12 per hour. Um, let's just do number one here. Maybe. Um, and so um, I guess we'd want to know what, what we're graphing. So what, what could we graph in a question like this? So if this question was on the test, I, I'd be much more specific and say, you know, uh, here's what I want you specifically to draw. But one thing we could look at is Caitlin's earnings over various um, hours. And, um, and then, of course, there's a bit of what we call reality in the question. And we'll talk about that in, in a bit here. So I might say let's, um, and once again, you can use X if you want. Um, I, I like t here. I, I might say let t equal uh, the number of hours worked. And uh, once again, if you prefer to use x, that's that's fine. Um, but t t might make it a bit more real for us because t obviously that has something to do with time, whereas x. Um, um, not not very specific what that would what that would mean, um, and then I would want to have some value for my y value. So I'm just going to write an x above t, and say so that's that's really the x part of the graph, and then I might want to write a statement where I'm using y, because um, remember we, we these are linear, so it should be like y equals mx plus b. Um, but I I might choose a different th uh, letter than y, so maybe um, earnings uh, could be e, um, maybe. maybe M for money, um, just something that kind of makes sense to you. Um, there's no real like right or wrong variable to use here. Um, it's purely sort of preference. Um, I'm, I'm going to use uh, E for earnings, okay? But you know, if that was a if this was a physics class, you might use E for energy. So, um, so there's lots of different uh, symbols you're going to learn as you go through um, your studies that uh, might make more sense to you. But for this question, I'll use E for earnings, uh, the amount of money she makes. And that would be related to $12 per hour. So if she worked one hour, she'd make $12. If she worked two hours, she'd make $24. Um, and so it would seem to be that if T is the number of hours, then I should take 12 and times it by T. Okay, now if you prefer to use X's and Y's, that's not nothing wrong with that. You could say Y is equal to 12X. So same equation here. And notice that there's nothing here about her making um, some other form of money um, before she earns her, her hour. So for example, if she didn't go to work, if she chose not to work, uh, then she would earn zero dollars. Um, so the, the y-intercept here, the b value is actually technically zero. There's no zero. So there's no value on the end, like in terms of adding a certain number of uh, dollars. Um, and some some jobs, that's that's just how it is. You you get you get paid for the hours you work. Um, and some jobs you get you get paid salary, so you may not work the same number of hours as other people. Uh, some other jobs you, you might get paid for selling things. And so if you sell something, you make a certain amount of profit um, from that. And so there's lots of different ways you can be paid in this world. Um, and I'm just looking at, uh, in this case here, purely an hourly hourly wage here, okay? Now, if I if I write the equation and left it like this, and I said, that's, that's my equation. Um, then there's a lot of weird things that could come from just leaving the equation like that. Like a lot of weird, um, I guess, um, uh, 
uh, outcomes, I guess, maybe look at it that way. And uh, things that I think we would all agree are, are, are dumb. Um, and I'm gonna just show you some examples of those. Um, so let's say I said, I'm gonna make T equals, um, um, T equals, let's say, negative two, okay? And so I plug that into my equation. So E equals 12 times negative two. And of course, if I work that out, um, I would get E is negative 24. Now, what, what was E again? Well, E was the earnings. So she would earn negative $24 if she did that. Um, so could could she actually do that? Like, would, would that be something she could do? Um, well, um, if T is the number of hours she worked, and you're saying she worked negative two hours, um, that means you're saying she worked less than zero hours, which is ridiculous. Um, now, if she was overpaid, maybe the employer could deduct two hours pay from her, um, and that, that's maybe a, a situation where you could say T is negative two. Um, but in terms of sort of your typical um, uh, scenario that that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense and so if I graph this thing and I and I don't I don't think about what I'm graphing I just I purely just go on my my math mathematics as it were um, and think well I'm just going to graph this thing I'm going to make this uh, the time axis down here and I'm going to make uh, this axis up here the earnings and I say well, okay well I got a y-intercept at zero and my slope is, uh, well, number is 12 there. So my slope is 12 over one, which means for every, for every one, I might need to adjust my axis here, but let's, let's make these, let's make these 12s. So um, additions of 12. And then let's say that's one hour, two hours, three hours, one, two, three. And if, if you, if you plot the points here and you draw the line, you say, well, it goes on like that, and it goes on like that. That's that's what the linear function says it does. Um, but really, in this kind of question, it doesn't make sense to maybe draw um, the line going down into the into the third quadrant. Um, so generally, what you what you might see in a lot of graphs is they get rid of this part and they get rid of this part, and you're just dealing with um, quadrant one. So you just kind of see quadrant one there. But even in quadrant one, it, it, there is a little bit of a, um, a, what could be um, misunderstood about this is that if you're saying the line goes on forever, then that means if she worked, let's say she worked um, a thousand hours, she worked a thousand hours, um, then you say, well, the earnings would be 12 times a thousand. So she would work 12,000 12,000, so she should earn $12,000 if she worked for a um, thousand hours. Now, there's a lot of issues like in terms of employment, like can you actually work a thousand hours? Um, and I guess you could say, well, maybe maybe over a certain number of weeks, uh, months, uh, that would be that would be possible. Um, but you know, there could come restrictions here in terms of the, uh, the number of hours you work in a day um, and, uh, and, and, and sort of um, interpreting the graph that way. And of course, um, um, uh, there, there are other things like holidays and stuff like that where you might get paid uh, a different wage um, depending on your job. But just as far as purposes to sketch the graph, that's kind of the graph you could draw. Um, I, I think what I would look at is, um, do you understand that you can't really work negative hours? That's not really um, uh, something we would look at here. So we, we tend to restrict our graph to the, to the first quadrant. Um, if you look at question number two, this was uh, um, Braden here, and it's $40 uh, for a shift plus two dollars for every skateboard he sells. Okay, so, um, so he earns forty dollars for a shift and then two dollars um, per uh, skateboard sold. Now once again the, the question there's not really a question here. It's just it's just giving you information and saying can you can you draw a linear function from this? And so there's many functions you, you could maybe create up for yourself here. Um, one, one equation that I might create here is uh, similar to uh, the one uh, for Caitlin, which was uh, looking at the earnings um, for Braden over this, this job that he has. So he's gonna make $40 no matter what in his shift, um, but he also gets a $2 uh, bonus, if you wanna think of it that way, for every skateboard he sells. So if he sold uh, one uh, skateboard, he'd get $2 for that, plus the $40 um, earned uh, for working his shift. So that would be 
$42. Um, so we're going to see if we can write a, a function for this that, that would um, relate to that. Now, I'm going to go um, back to y's and x's here, but once again, I, I think using variables that are uh, related to what you're talking about is, is much more useful because then you, when you look back at it or someone else is looking at your statement, then they can maybe make sense. Oh, you, oh, you meant T to be time. Okay, that makes sense. And E meant uh, um, the earnings. But, you know, once again, I'm, I'm going to just sort of go back to our Y equals MX plus B. Okay. So if I'm going to, I'm actually going to do this reverse now. I'm going to draw the graph first. And I'm going to draw a graph that's just in the first quadrant. Um, and so let's take a look here. Uh, so let's say this is uh, earnings over here. And down at the bottom, we have time. So the time, the time worked here. Now notice that, that regardless of how many skateboards he sells, he's gonna make $40 no matter what. So if he, um, if he was to work a shift, um, actually, sorry, I'm gonna really erase that time. That's actually not really important in this question because what's what's changing here is the number of skateboards he sells. So if he sells one skateboard, he earns an extra two dollars. If he sold ten skateboards, he earns an extra twenty dollars. So this axis, I'm actually going to make number of skateboards sold. And what I notice is that if if he sells zero skateboards, then he still makes. $40. So I might make this, um, let's go up by, let's make that uh, 20. Let's make that uh, more than that, so 40. And then we go a bit more, let's see here, let's make this um, 16. Okay. So no matter what, he's going to make $40, or $40, I put a little dot right there. And then basically, depending on the number of skateboards he sells, he's going to make more money. So my graph's kind of tight here. So one, two, three, four, five. So if he sells uh, one skateboard, he's going to make $42. If he sells two skateboards, he's going to make $44. I think my, my line's going to be a bit more shallow here. And, and this line just keeps on going. So if he sold um, five skateboards, he'd make 10 more dollars. So he'd be 50, so maybe in the middle there. So if I look at this, I'm drawing a real rough sketch, I should use a ruler for that. Um, then that's kind of what the line would, would look like here. But what would the equation of that line be? Well, um, the slope here uh, would be, well, I guess let's look at these 40 and two here. So really what's changing here, what changes over um, uh, the number of skateboards sold is this $2 amount. So I guess you could say that Y is equal to two X, that would be the slope of the line. Um, you notice it went over one up two, over one up two, and then, and then I guess it just went over five up 10. Um, so, so the slope is $2, but, um, an initial uh, earnings of forty dollars to to start off with here, so two x um, plus plus forty. Okay, um, and then in Kiana's question, um, she's earning uh, a weekly salary of three hundred dollars. So basically, she makes three dollars per week. And then similar to to Braden, uh, she's going to make twelve percent, or she's going to make a certain amount of money on what she sells. Um, and so maybe if this is a clothing store or, or something like that, you might make profit based on the number of items you, you sell. Uh, it may not be a flat fee and you might get a percentage. So if you sold a, a really cheap shirt or a low price shirt, you wouldn't make as much money as if you sold a really expensive shirt. So there's lots of different um, jobs out there that, that can pay their employees different ways. Um, so let's take a look at our um, equation. That's so we've got Y is equal to MX plus B. And so she gets 12% um, of sales. Okay. So um, let's say uh, she sold um, uh, $100 worth of material. So I'm going to do a little calculation here. So let's say she sold $100 worth of um, shirts or socks or, I don't know, um, fidgets or something. Um, and then you're, you're, you were curious, well, how much money would she make on that? Well, we take the amount of sales, which is 100, we times it by the percentage, but we have to convert that percent to a decimal decimal number. So 0.12 is the same as 12%. So 0.12 times 100 is 12. So she would have made uh, $12 um, 
with this little um, uh, perk that she gets at her job, but she still would have made the, the $300 she gets paid per week. So she gets paid $300 plus the 12, which would be $312, okay? So let's say over the week she, she sold $100 worth of clothes, then she should make $312 uh, in total. But let's say she does an, another really good week and she makes, she sells $800 worth of material. So we sell it, we times 800 by 0 0.12. So 800 times 0 0.12. And now she's gonna make $96 with this, this perk. But that's, that's with the perk part. Um, and then she has to add that to the $300 she would get paid normally. So add that to 300, add the 300, scroll over. So you can see in the, in the uh, second example, she would make more money because she sold more stuff. So she, get, she gets paid a, a, a commission, I guess you think of it that way, on what she's, what she's selling here. So how could we write a function for this? Um, well, if we think about um, what's constant here is that she's always gonna get paid $300. So, so it doesn't matter if she sells um, anything. Now, it may turn her, her employer lets her go if she doesn't sell anything, uh, but, um, but she's gonna get a, a flat fee of $300. So we would say y is equal to mx plus b. So really, um, she's always going to make $300. So that would be our, our y intercept there. Always going to start at 300. Um, but then the slope of this, what would the slope be here? Well, it depends what we make x, I guess. So let's, let's make x. Let's let x equal um, amount of <clears throat> money in sales. So the, the amount of money that she earns through selling things. So once again, the $100, the $800 uh, in, in, in amount here. And so, and what we did here is we times it by 12%, but notice we times it by point, point 0.12. So 0.12 X here. Um, so that would be our, our equation. We can, we can test that. We can, we can see if that, that makes sense. Um, so we could just use the example we just did. Let's let's use this example right here and see if that works for us. Um, so if she sells eight hundred dollars, well, the x is the amount of money, the amount of money of of sales, and then we add to that three hundred, and we can see pretty clearly that's going to give us the same ninety six plus three hundred, being three ninety six here. Okay. Now sketching this could be a little bit hard because the slope here is point one two. Um, and your y-intercept is 300. So I think you know doing an actual accurate graph of this would be would be challenging. Um, but you know we could we could try it. Let's see what we get here. Nothing wrong. Give it a try. Um, so let's say that this axis, the x-axis here, is um, amount of money in sales, and the y-axis. Um, would be her earnings. Okay. Earnings. That would be earnings. So two two axes measuring money here. Money, money, money. Um, okay, so we've got um, uh, I think I might go up by why not go up by hundreds here. So let's say this is one hundred, this is two hundred, this is three hundred. And up here if I continue the graph, this would be 400. So 400, 300, 200, 100. And then my x-axis, I want to be um, somewhat liberal here because <clears throat> we can see if she sells $800, she's only going to make 96 more dollars. So I might make my um, x-axis here, um, let's think here, let's make it, let's make it hundreds. Um, yeah, so maybe I'm gonna make that a little bit further. And it's just it's just a sketch, so we'll make that um, 100, and then make that 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and um, once again, it's not going to be um, a perfect graph here, um, but that would be 300 for selling nothing. Um, if she sold $100, she makes 12 more. So it's really kind of hard to approximate that, but it would be a bit more. And um, if we did 400, that would be uh, 53 roughly. So, um, so maybe about here. 
And if you use your ruler for this, so on, the, on your test questions, make sure you use a ruler to draw your, your lines. They're supposed to be straight. And uh, you would get something like that. Okay. Now notice I don't draw it into quadrant number two. Um, I don't draw the line going this way um, because that, that would imply that she would lose money. Um, um, I guess I guess in some jobs, I mean, I guess if, if there was merchandise stolen, um, maybe they could deduct your salary. I don't know if that's really legal anymore. Um, but uh, I, I think that's not done very often. They probably just let you go. Um, anyway, so um, don't don't quote me on the law. I'm not a lawyer. Um, anyway, so uh, so that's kind of what our graph would would look like there. Okay, so our, our last uh, two questions here uh, deal with uh, Mr. Quas House. And once again, I would ask you to pause the video and um, see if you can um, take uh, start off with that one. Okay, so we've got this uh, equation here and we're being asked um, to uh, do a bunch of things. One is sketch a diagram. And um, just to clarify some of the information given in the question, we're told that uh, this equation that uh, we start with here, this equation up here, that talks about the height um, above the ground um, in feet versus the horizontal distance in feet from the, uh, the gutter to the center of the house. So the gutter, the gutter would be here, and the center of the house would be this blue dashed uh, line here. And we're told that from the gutter to there is 40 feet. And uh, what else are we told? That's about it. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so, um, and then this, we got, a, we got a roof here. And uh, if we were just graphing this, once again, if we do this idea of just purely using the grid to draw something like this, um, we gotta be really careful how we interpret the, the data. Um, we wanna make sure we don't um, you know, get something confused in our heads here. And uh, so I'm just gonna draw the line as it is. So let's let's say um, X is the, the horizontal distance and the H is the vertical distance above above the ground. So where is our y intercept for this line then? So we have we have the equation h equals one third x plus fifty. So which one of those numbers is the y intercept? Well the y intercept is uh, the b value which is the fifty. So I'm going to uh, put that on my graph. I'll, I'll say maybe these are going up by um, what should they go up by? Uh, Let's go up by, let's say that's, it says 25, 50. Once again, it's just a sketch, we're just doing a rough sketch here. And then we're told that um, uh, the roof's like up one over three. So this would be the slope, that's the slope. This was the y-intercept. Um, so the slope's one up, and then three over. So it's quite a gradual slope. So I, I'm thinking kind of maybe something like this, but it would, it would really depend on what I make my X axis. And I'm gonna draw it like this, like that, positive slope line. And um, maybe uh, it's, um, that's 25. Let's, let's keep it about the same here. So maybe make this uh, 20 and then 40. And sixty. Okay, so let's let's make some sense of this. So why why is that line not really very good? Uh, well, I mean, my axis is pretty wonky, but um, the other part of it is it in terms of reality. Like we have to think about what we're talking about in the question. It's a roof. Um, so if you if you if you extrapolate from the graph, you you, you keep going to the right, say. That would imply that the, the height of the roof just continues to get larger and larger and it never reaches a top like there's never a top to the roof so in, in essence it would go to the moon or to mars or something like that which we know is is ridiculous um and the other uh, way of looking at two other line looking at here this would imply that you could actually eventually go below the x-axis so like for example the roof um would eventually stretch so far this way it would go underground and I don't know about Mr. Quast, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't buy a house that, that did that. Um, so um, I mean, there he's, they're both, there's two of both of them. Both of them are very smart people. So um, anyway, so there we go. And, and super nice too. And um, quite tall actually. But uh, anyway, um, so, anyway, so we got uh, a roof that has a positive slope. And obviously it's, it has to stop somewhere. Um, so where does it stop? Well, this is where the 40 feet comes in here. This, this, um, this business of, 
40 feet from the gutter. So if we assume that the gutter is at the end, that's 50 feet above the ground. So this here would be, that would be 50 feet right there. Then um, the graph, uh, let me just use the appropriate eraser here. Um, the graph wouldn't be able to go all this way. It would have to stop, start right there. And of course the graph couldn't go on forever. It would actually have to stop at 40. So this would be a situation where um, the line you draw isn't actually um, the, line, sorry, the line draw isn't actually one that goes on forever. It has to have a, a clear start point and a clear stop point um, because it's, it's a roof. It's a, it's a tangible object that has a beginning and an end. So the roof starts there at, at 50 feet above the ground and finishes somewhere up here at the top of the roof. And that, that would be the, the slope of that, that roof then. So it says, uh, uh, what, is, what is the height of the, above the ground for a bird sitting on the roof 10 feet from the center of the house. So we've got to be careful where we put the bird here. Um, the center of the house is right here. That's the center. And so we're going to go 10 feet that way. So the bird maybe is sitting sitting here. There's my bird. Um, I will label the bird and I will call my bird bird. So that's the bird. So the bird is uh, 10 feet from the center of the house. But our formula here is measuring height versus x. And what was x again? x was the distance from the gutter um, um, to the center of the house. So although the bird is 10 feet from the center of the house, it's actually 30 feet from the gutter. So if we go down here, that would be 30 feet um, from the gutter. Because remember, remember the, the green line is 40 and the bird is 10, 10 away from the, the, the dash blue line. So it has to be 30 for this distance here. So I just go to my fancy dancy uh, formula and I find out my height. Height is equal to one third times x, and x would be 30, plus the original 50 here. So that would be h equals 30 divided by 3 is 10 plus 50. So my h value here is 60. So the bird would be, um, the bird is 60 feet above the ground. Now, the last question here talks about this uh, ant, which I will use um, a purple color for my ant. Uh, so my ants may be, uh, how far is my ant? Uh, the ant is crawling on the roof at a height of 53 feet above the ground. So he's not right at the gutter. He's got to be maybe somewhere, because that was 60 feet for the, for the bird. So I'm thinking my ant, which really wouldn't be that big but this ant is gonna also be called ant, um, is uh, sitting right there. And so the question is how far are they to the center of the roof? So what is that distance there? Well, clearly um, they've gotta be more than 10 because the bird was 10, the bird was higher up. Um, but let's take a look where the ant is then. So we go to our fancy dancy formula and we now know that uh, H is the height and we're told that in question three, the height is 53. So 53 is equal to one third x plus the 50. And once again, we're trying to find the x distance, which is the distance from the center of the house. So I'm going to minus 50 from both sides first. You can see all the stuff we did in the last chapter is sort of helpful here, how to work with equations. So that's a three equals one third x um, here. And now to undo a fraction, we would times uh, both sides by three. So I'm going to times this side by 3, times this side by 3, and that's going to give me 3 times 3 is 9 equals x, or x equals 9, of course. So what is, what is x again? Well, x was, um, x was the horizontal distance from the center of the house. So, um, oh, sorry, from, from the, what was the question actually asking? So the question was asking, sorry, I should be careful here. Uh, the question was asking how far from the center of the house are we? So that was the purple line. I'll just resketch that again. That's that purple line right there. So we want to know how far that is. 
but the x value, remember, the x value is the horizontal distance from the gutter to the center of the house. So from the gutter, it's nine feet. So this is nine feet. Nine feet from the gutter, which means um, if the entire distance is 40, then it must be 31 feet. So the ant is 31 feet from the center of the house. Now for the bonus question, I'm not going to give you the full answer, but I'm going to give you a little clue here just to start you off because I'm not going to uh, test you on one this hard on the test. This is this is too hard, I think, for students. Um, but let's let's take a look at our roof again. And what I'm going to draw is just the, the roof like that. And we know that um, the ant here. We know the ant is uh, where are we? That's you know the ant is thirty one feet from the center of the house, right? And we know that uh, that is when the ant is 53 feet above the ground. Um, above the ground. Okay. And what we're trying to find out is how far is the ant from the top of the house? So we're trying to figure out how far, is that the last or I should re read the question. Uh, how close is the ant from the top of the house? Yeah. So the ant would have to crawl up the rest of the roof um, to get there. Now, what I was going to get you to think about was, because I don't want to answer this for you, is um, if you look at that shape, we've, we've, looked, we've seen shapes like that before, where you just draw a line over this one. And we know that would be a right angle um, triangle there. So I guess the question is, could you figure out, I guess, first, what this height is? And if you could get that height, is there a way then to get this height? So I'm going to put a number one here. See if you can figure that out using the equation. And in the second bit here, is there some equation uh, that we could work with that would allow us to figure out that, that distance, what that distance would be? And my only clue to you would be is think about like ancient Greece. I, I think that might be a, a, a giveaway at that point. Um, and toga wearing people. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop it there and uh, see how you do on that. Um, so don't forget our test is coming up. I'm going to send an email out about that. So hope you guys are doing well.